Thank you for watching the ACS Library. My name's Kyle and I aim to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in about five minutes a day. Today, we stray from our favorite document and cover some general information. We'll be talking about the FAA required flight review, covered in FAR 6156. We'll discuss the following topics. Who can conduct a flight review? What items to bring with you to the flight review? What topics you can expect to cover and how to study? Tasks that can be completed in lieu of the flight review? In the near future, I'll get a video out covering how to conduct a flight review. There will be a lot of valuable information on what your instructor will be looking for during the flight review, so I hope that you'll check that out once it's up to. Anyways, who can conduct a flight review? Any FAA certified flight instructor authorized to operate the aircraft to be utilized in the flight review. The flight review must be accomplished every 24 calendar months by anybody who wishes to act as pilot in command. If it's been 24 months or longer since your last flight review, you'll have to get one completed before you can act as PIC. This gives you an opportunity to fly with a flight instructor while you prepare for your flight review. Small rant alert, while it is definitely convenient to fly with your primary instructor to knock the flight review out quickly, it is recommended that one contact an instructor with whom they have rarely or never flown. One review every two years is hardly enough to keep anybody proficient, but the review will often be a bit tougher and more beneficial with an unfamiliar instructor. Remember that you can't fail a flight review, so it's a great idea to challenge yourself here. Most pilots and instructors who fly together often tend to acquiesce to one another's instruction and examination techniques, usually leading to pretty predictable and relaxed flights. Going out to do an hour of casual VOR tracking with your buddy who happens to have an instructor license gets the flight review done quick and easy, but it doesn't teach you much about your capabilities and weaknesses as a pilot, unless you're weak at tracking VOR radials. Okie dokie, rant over. What to bring with you to the flight review? You'll want to show up to the flight review with your pilot certificate, a valid government-issued photo ID, your medical certificate, your logbook, your completed nav log and flight plan, a flight computer and plotter, an appropriate sectional or terminal area chart, any reference material you think might be helpful, typically at least a far aim, something to take notes with, and a positive attitude. What topics can you expect the flight review to cover? The flight review is a minimum of one hour ground and one hour flight training. These minimum times are based on knowledge levels. If you still can't explain how the flaps aid in descent or the requirements for class delta airspace after an hour of ground, it's likely that you won't be headed out to begin your minimum hour long flight evaluation until later in the day. I've had applicants who absolutely crush it. They show up prepared and an hour later we're headed out to pre-flight and I've had others who've taken a 40 year break from flying and need to spend a few weeks getting ready to even think about completing a flight review. The amount of time and money you'll spend on a flight review is 100% up to how well prepared you show up for it. As far as the specific topics covered in a flight review, FAR 6156 splits this into two subjects. A review of part 91 of the Federal Aviation Regulations and a review of the maneuvers and procedures required to demonstrate safe exercise of private pilot privileges. These two topics are pretty broad. As far as the ground knowledge goes, just read through part 91 of the FAR AIM, remembering all the facts as you go. Just kidding, of course. There's an easy way to get yourself primed. The FAA offers a free flight review preparation course available in the Aviation Learning Center at faasafety.gov. I've provided a link in the description. Additionally, a regulatory review list of the FARs and a few AIM items to be covered is provided in Appendix 3 of the FAA's Guide to Conducting a Flight Review. I'll provide a link to that article and a PDF version of the regulatory review list in the description as well. Run through that flight review preparation course and familiarize yourself with the info covered in the items in Appendix 3 and you should be well prepared for the regulatory review portion of the ground review. The ground portion of the flight review also includes a bit of cross-country flight planning. Pilots may use computer-generated flight plan information. I recommend ForeFlight. That's what I use for all my flight planning. It's stupid easy and accurate. The Garmin app is another good one to use. Those are the only two that I've really used extensively so far, so I can't offer my opinion on any other navigation planning services. To save time, it is recommended that pilots show up with current weather information along the planned route. As far as the flying portion of the flight review goes, it is impossible to say exactly what one will encounter, as every flight review is unique. Generally speaking, one can expect the instructor to evaluate the pilot's aeronautical decision making, single pilot resource management, and knowledge of aircraft systems as they fly a portion of their nav log, encountering scenarios along the way. 
These scenarios involve emergencies related to weather, systems malfunctions, health, etc. Some possible examples might range from an alternator failure to a rowdy, incoherently drunk passenger to an unexpected squall line up ahead. There are a million different scenarios one might expect to cover during a flight review. Familiarize yourself with your aircraft's POH and the airspace and environmental conditions in which you'll be operating, and you'll be set here. Aircraft control is typically tested in the form of private pilot maneuvers. Practice the maneuvers to private pilot ACS standards, and the aircraft control section is covered. The last thing we'll be covering in this video are a few things that can be completed instead of a flight review. If a person completes a check ride, pilot proficiency check, or any phase of the FAA WINGS program, they won't need to perform a flight review until 24 calendar months from that date. Be on the lookout for a notification for a video over the WINGS program in the near future, where I explain how to navigate the whole program from creating your account to dodging your upcoming flight review. I hope you'll check it out. I'd like to close this video with the reminder that the duration of the review is determined by your level of preparedness. This channel is all about saving money during flight training, so I'm obligated to recommend that you study at home for free rather than in front of an instructor for $50 an hour. Show up prepared. Anyways, that's all you need to know for your next FAA flight review. As always, thank you so much for checking out the ACS library. If you've learned something from today's video, I hope that you might like or share it. If you're interested in seeing more, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to the right of that to enable notifications. Questions and feedback are always welcome in the comments section. Thanks again and safe flying.